everyone, it's me, Aaron, and before today's episode begins, I just have to get something out of the way right here at the top of the video. I know it's Wednesday, so you guys are all waiting for the new episode of Comic Class to come out. Comic Class is actually going to be late this week because the idea I had for Comic Class this week was something I thought, you know what, this will just be for fun. Just a quick little fun idea, just me geeking out over something. It'll just be a quick little breeze, and then it went on for about four times longer than I expected it to go. So yeah, it's not that I'm not working on something, it's just way freaking bigger than I expected. I have really bad time management skills. So, this week's episode of Comic Class, it's going to be coming out a little bit late. Hopefully it'll be up by tomorrow, but again, this ended up being a much larger video than I was expecting it to be, especially considering I was expecting it to be just a quick little, hey, fun idea. It was not a quick fun idea. It is a huge, massive undertaking. <sighs> So instead, today I am bumping up Thorgy's Picks. Yes, that's right, Thorgy's Picks, the show that I do on this channel where I just give you a quick recommendation for a trade that I want to talk about that I feel like spotlight every single week. Then if you want to check out that trade, then you can look in the description down below where I will give you a link to where you can find it on Amazon. And if you follow that link and buy that book on Amazon, or even if you don't buy that book, but you decide to buy anything else on Amazon, we will get a small chunk of the profit as long as you start by going through that link. It is a quick, easy way to get yourself something cool and support this channel at the same time. And you know, at the moment in the comic book world, everyone is talking about Scott Snyder's Justice League. Everybody was waiting on it, it's finally here, everyone is praising it, and I was thinking about doing a video about it, but then I remembered that just a couple weeks ago I came in here and did a video talking about his No Justice series, which was the precursor to his Justice League series. So, yeah, I felt like it would kind of be repetitive for me to come in here and just automatically do another video, kind of covering the same thing all over again. So, we're not doing that. But I still wanted to do something in honor of the Justice League, so I started thinking, what was my favorite Justice League run? Who was my favorite writer on Justice League? What were some of my favorite Justice League stories? So that is what I am talking about today. Today on Thorgy's Picks, I'm going to be spotlighting the Grant Morrison Justice League run. Now, I will admit, this came out when I was a kid, and it was really kind of my first exposure to the Justice League. And I fully realized that when it comes to comic books, a lot of people are kind of ruled by their nostalgia. So I fully understand that the reason why I say this is the best Justice League run could entirely be because I read it when it was a kid, and that's why it stuck with me all this time. It could have tons of problems in there that I'm not seeing because I am totally looking at it with rose-colored glasses. But yeah, man, I think that this run is amazing. I still look back at it and go, yeah, well, okay, it's got some of the Grant Morrison-y things that I have come to dislike over the years, like when he just comes in here with a giant massive concept but then explains none of it, and you're just expected to kind of roll with the punches. I've kind of gotten tired of that over the years with Grant Morrison. And there is a little bit of that in here. There is a whole bunch of, oh, this is a giant metaphysical thing that there is no way that you could possibly comprehend it, but the Justice League is going to have to come in here and try and stop it. And it's like, okay, that's a cool thing once, but then you keep doing it several times. However, he does not do that nearly as much in his Justice League run as he has done in several of the other things that he's written. And when he does do it in this Justice League run, it actually kind of works. Like, in fact, those actually tend to be some of the most memorable and best moments in this entire series. He came up with amazing, huge concepts, and then actually followed through on them. As I said, one of the problems that I've developed with Grant Morrison over the years is I think he comes up with huge concepts, and then kind of just leaves it up to you, the audience, to figure out what it could all possibly mean. Again, that's nice every now and again, but I think he kind of overdoes it. Here in Justice League, he would come up with huge concepts, and he would still give the audience just enough that would be like, all right, I know everything I need to know in order to enjoy Superman punching this angel. Yes, there is a moment in this series where Superman has to fight an angel and it's an amazing Superman moment. Like earlier in that issue, he was talking to Wally West about how, yeah, sometimes being Superman kind of feels like too much. I feel like everybody kind of looks at me like I have to solve all their problems and I don't think I can do that. I sometimes worry that I'm not going to meet people's expectations. I sometimes worry that I can't be as strong as everyone wants me to be. And then later you've got this angel with the full force of heaven trying to crush the earth and Superman is holding him up and Wally stops and looks at him and just goes, this is the guy who said he couldn't live up to people's expectations? He's literally holding back heaven from destroying the earth. I was like, yeah, that sums up Superman to me. He is a very human guy. He has those same doubts. He has those moments in which he's like, oh man, can I be as good as I need to be? And then he is. He 
is as good and he exceeds what we all thought he possibly could do. In fact, it's not just Superman. One of the things that defines uh, the Grant Morrison run on Justice League to me is that every character in here got a moment that made me go, that is why this character is on this team. Everybody got that shiny moment in which they just came in here and went, yeah, I am a superhero. And this is going to go down as one of my most iconic moments in my entire career. All within this same run. Uh, for example, The Flash, early on in like the first story arc of Grant Morrison's run on Justice League, there comes a moment in which these white Martians have come down to Earth and they are tricking everyone into accepting them as heroes and now the Justice League has to reform after all these years, come back together in order to stop them and The Flash is going up against their speedster and he just outruns the speedster and goes all the way around the Earth until he comes back around them and then hits them with all that momentum and sends them flying across the planet. Yeah, one of the coolest damn things that The Flash has ever done. Or Batman. When people ask me what my favorite Batman moment is, I have two answers that are tied for number one, and they both came from the Grant Morrison Justice League series. Early on, like I said, the first spells that they had to go up against were these white Martians who were disguising themselves as superheroes and getting the whole world to fall in love with them, and that's what got the Justice League to come back together again, and these white Martians had beat the Justice League. They were all tied up, they were powerless. The only one who had escaped was Batman. And Batman snuck into their base, and then they were like, Batman, he's the one human guy. Here, three of you go and take him out, it'll be no problem at all. And then they go in there, and they find that one member of their squad had already been taken out. He had a note pinned to him that just said, I know. And then they go, what's that smell? And you see Batman light a match, drop it to the ground, and there's gasoline everywhere, and a big circle wraps around these villains. And here's the thing, if you know White Martians, you know their one weakness is fire. Batman beat them by being a detective. So often I talk about my problem with Batman in the comics these days is he's just kind of a deus ex machina machine. You don't actually see that he is doing the detective work. It's not him fighting things by learning about them. It's just him going, yes, I already know all this and I already built a machine that will handle this for me. Here, okay, the White Martians. He does the detective work. He figures out what they are. He comes in here with the one weakness that has already been established that these White Martians have. Done. That was an amazing Batman moment. But my other favorite Batman moment, again, came from this series. It wasn't even a Batman moment. It was a Bruce Wayne moment. There was a moment in which uh, Lex Luthor got the Injustice Gang back together again, and they're all going up against the Justice League. The Justice League is down and out. How are they going to stop him? You see Batman in the Batcave, and he just goes, Luthor is planning on everything. But there's one thing they didn't plan on. Bruce Wayne, and then he turns around and you see he's in the Batman suit, but he's got the cowl off and he's just thinking there as Bruce Wayne. And then it's revealed later on down the storyline that while Lex Luthor was taking on the Justice League, Wayne Industries started just buying up huge chunks of Luthor Industries. And I was like, oh, uh, LexCore, that's what it's called, sorry. Uh, just buying up huge chunks of LexCore. And I was just like, that is one of the best freaking badass Batman moments. And it didn't involve a gadget, it didn't involve a punch being thrown, it just involved Bruce Wayne using his brain. But alright, I'm not going to come in here and just keep listing off all my favorite moments from this run, we would be here all day, but that's my point about this run. I could do that. I could list off all the amazing moments from this run because every single character gets those shining moments where they get to step up and go, this is why I'm on the team. Even Green Arrow had that moment, and not even Ollie, his son. Connor, he got that moment in which he joined the team and it's this great like, the rest of the team is down, I'm the only one left, time for me to prove why I'm a hero. And it is one of those moments that will make you fall in love with that character. Every character gets that moment in here. And it's because Grant Morrison, he understands each of these characters. And he understands the importance of these characters. He understands what each of these characters represent and who they are and why we have come to love them. Again, I'll go ahead and share one more moment with you in here. It's from the White Martian storyline again. And it comes that moment in which the Justice League is pairing off with everyone. They're all going up against the White Martian, and Superman is going up against their leader, and the leader of the White Martians is telling him, yeah, you're not like them. You know you're different. You could join us. You know you're superior to the humans. You know you're better than them. Come and join us and fight beside us. And you just see this look of Superman just being pissed off. The next panel, BAM! It's just that White Martian being punched into space, and I just looked at that and went, that one exchange is everything that I love about Superman. 
So many people think that's how Superman feels. So many people think that Superman is walking around like, I'm an outsider, I'm not one of them, I'm not like the other humans, I'll always be different and separate. No! Superman loves being a human. He loves being a part of the human race. He loves being side by side with all the other humans out there. And if you insult those humans, he's gonna be mad about it. I read that and I just went, this is it. This is Superman right here. Superman, he stands up for humans, protects humans, and he punches the monsters that want to defeat the humans. Oh man, that is exactly what I look for in a Superman book. And every single character gets those moments. But it's not just the heroes who got big shiny moments during the Grant Morrison Justice League run. The villains got really big moments as well. Grant Morrison came in here and took a lot of older villains and redefined them and actually made them really cool. Like, he took the key. This awful, lame, cheesy villain from the Justice League's past who his power was he could open any door. That's it. And he had this awful costume. He turned him into this weird, creepy pasta, like crypt keeper looking dude. And it was like, yeah, he can open any door, including the door to your mind. And it's like, yeah, okay. As I mentioned, Grant Morrison, he likes to do these big, weird, psychedelic storylines. And sometimes he does them when he shouldn't. And he doesn't exactly know how to pull back on stuff like that. This is a perfect example of when you should do a storyline like that. That is a perfect example of when you can take a character and adapt them into that crazy psychedelic style storyline, and he nailed it with that. Grant Morrison knew exactly when to use that unique talent of his on this book. Another villain who he completely redefined in his run was the Shaggy Man. Yeah, there was this android just called the Shaggy Man. Just a robot who was unbeatable. He was the strongest android out there. Just this giant juggernaut that could not be stopped. But his name was the Shaggy Man and he looked like Bigfoot that needed a haircut. Yeah, man, it doesn't matter how cool your powers are. If that's your name and how you look, no one's gonna take you serious. He had this general come in here who was just mad at the Justice League and thought, yeah, it's time that we finally take them down effect. Had his brain put in there, completely shaved it bare, so now you've got this giant caveman looking dude who can go toe to toe with Superman with giant tusks coming out of his mouth, and he's got the brain of a war general in there. Yeah, man! You actually found a way to make a lame Superman supervillain really cool. But there are other villains that he actually invented for this run. Didn't just reinvent them, actually came up with them from scratch, and they became some of my favorite villains for the Justice League ever. Prometheus. Listen, if you look at who Prometheus is in the comics today, they've brought that guy back several times and he has never been done justice. He has never actually really kind of lived up to his first appearance. But his first appearance under Grant Morrison was amazing. He was basically the best version of evil Batman we've ever gotten because he was a guy whose parents were criminals, they were killed by the police, he took all the fortune that they had acquired and used it to go around the world and make himself the world's greatest supervillain and he came in here and basically snuck on board the Justice League satellite and found a way to take down every single member of the team. One by one by one by one. And it was like watching a surgeon work. You watch this and you're just like, man, the precision that he is taking down each member of the team. How well he knows every single one of their weaknesses. It made you realize what a threat he was. And as I said, he was basically the evil Batman they knew exactly how to make you realize what a threat he was because you know that the moment that you read his origin story and you go, oh, he's evil Batman, you're like, well, clearly our version of Batman, the real Batman, the good Batman, will be able to stop him. They ended the issue after he started attacking the Justice League's Watchtower with him going up against Batman and he kicked Batman's ass. Yeah, man, it's kind of like prison. You want to prove that you are not to be messed with? Find the biggest dude there and beat him up. Now, as I have been pointing out, Grant Morrison has one of the greatest imaginations in comics, and for about 90, 95% of this run, he was able to use that very effectively. Yes, there are some times in here in which it was like, all right, you need to pull back a little bit. Like the big final villain that they all fought during his run. Yeah, it didn't quite live up to expectations. I think that's because it was one of those like, no, 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 the battle is happening in the mine. It's like, yeah, we're not really seeing that exactly. So yeah, there was that one small time when the problems I have with Grant Morrison did kind of emerge there at the end of this run. But throughout this run, his imagination 
was a godsend. It was one of the things that made this such an iconic run. He's the guy who came in here with this brilliant idea of, let's send the Justice League into the future. How far into the future? I don't know, the 853rd century? How's that? How do you like them future apples? Yeah, we've seen these heroes go into the future before. Never that far, but Grant Morrison had the crazy ass imagination to actually give us a future that made us go, okay, that feels like 853rd century. I'll buy it. But as I said, the ending of his run, it left a little to be desired for me. But I mean, heck man, he was on this thing for years and that was years and years of a damn good, super imaginative Justice League series that really understood these characters. He wrote this thing starting in the 90s and he was still able to capture these characters. So we even had like mullet Superman and electric blue Superman. And yet Grant Morrison was able to write him in a way that made me go, yeah, that's Superman. I don't care if he's made of blue electricity that Superman, and that is the strongest thing about his Justice League run. So many other Justice League stories you look at and you go like, oh, okay, this is a really unique look at the Justice League doing this, doing that, being this thing over here. You read Grant Morrison's run in the Justice League and it's like, this is just a really darn good Justice League story. And when you finish his run, it then goes into the Mark Wade run, which I also think was amazing. That is also like way up there, it is like that close to being out the Grant Morrison run for me. So if you start reading this and you go all the way through it and you really enjoy it, keep going, man. Move on to the Mark Wade stuff. It's really damn good. So if you want to check this out, as I said, there will be a link in the description of where you can find it on Amazon, either physically or digitally. And if you decide to purchase it or anything else on Amazon, as long as you start by going through that link, we get a small cut of the profits. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. Again, I just want to apologize that comic class is going to be a little bit late this week, but I hope that it's worth it. As I said, it's just some big, crazy, goofy idea that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I decided that this week was the best time to finally do it. But I hope that you enjoy it. Come back tomorrow to see that. And again, if you want to check out that Justice League, go down into the description. And you can always follow me on Twitter and Twitch at Professor Thorgan to stay up to date with us. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye.